Mesh networking pineapples on this segment of Hack 5. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of techno lust. And we're back in the studio. Oh, it's completely rebuilt. I can't wait to give you guys a tour. Wow. I love, so I love what you guys have done with the place. You know? It's looking pretty good. It's Paul's, Paul's dream come true. This is what happens when I like, when I go out for like a week you and left? don't come back. Where were you? Yeah, I was like on going? vacation. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> but this is what happens. I come back after like a week of being out of the studio and this is what happens. Well, the place know, we, is completely changed. We have to re-engineer for the sake of re-engineering and any hacker understands what I mean by that. Right, You, because if it's not broken, you do fix it. I think it looks pretty good. I must say these DSLRs are like fantastic. It's really pretty. It's, yeah. yeah. Wow. I, I'm kind of liking these. Mm -hmm. No fuzzies. Yes. Yeah, so let us know in the comments or the feedback and give Paul props for engineering something uh, massive and awesome. Well, it kind of looks the same back here, so I yeah. guess that, that hasn't really changed. So I see you have a... Uh, one of these gigantic antennas on the this Mark V. actually not that bad, but yeah, yeah. What is this, 9? This is a 9 dBi. Okay. The, uh, the Mark V uh, comes with a 5 or 6, and it actually has like at least four times the range of the previous gen, the Mark IV. Really? Simply because of the connector. It used to be that there was a pigtail that would go to the board. I think it was called Ipex. Oh, yeah. So one of we the had things, some problems with that thing. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that I was talking about uh, last week was EIRP. Um, you know, the uh, combining the output of the radio with the gain of the antenna to get your total power. Oh. The, the thing that I didn't really talk about was that there, and I'm sure I got so many comments, I actually haven't, it hasn't aired yet, but I'm sure I will get comments about the fact that there's actually a loss in the way of like the, your cable or connectors or things of that nature. Oh, interesting. Yes. Why is that? Physics. Physics. Physics, oh, okay. man. Man, yeah. I should have taken one of those classes in college. <laughs> Physics, man. So, uh, do you, has this changed at all? It has. We, we actually went with a SMA connector that's soldered onto the board with the Mark V. And the reason for that is, as opposed to that IPEX, you know, pigtail on the, uh, the Mark IV, uh, it's actually a much more solid connection. It's, uh, it's more like pro than consumer. And uh, it means oh. that the, the unit itself will have much higher longevity. If something's going to break, I'd rather it be an antenna, which is less expensive, more easily to yeah. replace yeah. than the Mark V. And the then result the is mm -hmm. that even if you do have to use, say, an adapter to go ahead and get an RPSMA antenna on it, oh. um, it, it's still negligible as compared to what we had previously. I see. Interesting. Ooh, so what are you, are you talking about that in yeah, that's, today's episode? Yeah, that's the idea. Is actually, that why you're wearing a giant <laughs> gun on your back? This is, no, 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 no. This is just something I <laughs> hang out on rooftops with. I like to call it my, uh... You hang out on rooftops with that. It's my Wi-Fi boomstick. Because it's really smart to hang out on rooftops with no, something like that. I mean, it's like, you can get a lot of... That makes a lot of sense. ...gain with that. It's very stylish. Thank you. I yeah. think so. Wow. I think it it's looks not great. even in focus. Um, <laughs> So yeah, we're, we're talking about Yagi's and Parabolics and all sorts of other antennas because cool. I'm, um, I am putting together a pineapple mesh. Ooh. I'm wiring up the whole town. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yes. Wait, does the town know this? Some people in town okay. know this. <laughs> the locals do. <laughs> yeah, well, I figured this would be a great opportunity to talk about, you know, mesh networking and creating high power legal networks. This is a great oh. example of... Um, Actually, I should probably <laughs> preface that when we talk about stuff like this, please check with your locality because the laws may differ in your area. Um, That's and so true. don't get yourself in trouble and don't go over um, 4 watts EIRP if you're not doing point to point. Yeah, don't blame us. Yeah. <laughs> well, today I am talking about what is this episode? 1516? Yes. Cloud storage. You love cloud storage. Yeah, I'm cloning some drop boxes. Mm. It's good times. Remember hard drives? <laughs> hmm, gee, what are those? <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Well, let's get right to it. Awesome. Yes, right after this quick break. Well, here we are on the roof taking a look at the first node in our, uh, well, I don't know, in our mesh network or whatever you will call it uh, here. Of course, I'm using Wi-Fi pineapples because we make them, so I have them. But really, a lot of this applies to just about any access point. And I wanted to follow up on one of the things that I was talking about last week as far as power and radios and specifically DBM. When I say DBM, we're talking about the decibel milliwatts, right? And so 
there I did make a little mistake and I want to clear some things up because it, it can get a little confusing. One dBm is equal to 0.00125 watts. So as you can imagine, it's one of those things where you really want to use a calculator or a conversion table. That's what I do. There's a, I'll link it in the show notes. There's some amazing uh, conversion tables for you guys to use. And, uh, and I did also make a mistake where I said, uh, when I was talking about 40 dBm, 40 dBm would equal 10 watts. Uh, likewise, this unit here, we've coupled a uh, 24 dBm uh, power output from the pineapple with a 24 dBi gain antenna, this parabolic unit here, uh, facing the building across the street. And um, that's giving us a total power EIRP or uh, output of, of 48 dBm, which technically equates to not 60, but 63.09573444.8 watts, except not actually, uh, you see, there's this thing called the standing wave ratio. It's a ratio of the amplitude of the wave at its highest point and lowest point. And, um, and you measure the ratio in voltage as called a VSWR or sometimes VISWAR or VISWAR. I'm not an expert in this field. Um, it's a little bit outside of the scope of this discussion until we get into the software defined radio stuff. Uh, but essentially what happens is your power output will decrease as your SWR increases and typically the SWR increase is from well, what we call cable loss. So essentially in layman's terms, we can say no, this is not outputting 63.095 yada watts. Uh, it's significantly less. Now, is it more so than it would be if I was just using this little dipole antenna connected to the pineapple? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I don't know the exact measure because I don't know what the impedance of these cable losses are and all of the other physics factors that go into play here. However, it is an interesting fact that yes, you will lose, uh, I guess a good rule of thumb is the longer the cable, the more the loss. And so we try to keep everything as short as, as necessary here. If you are a ham radio operator in the San Francisco Bay Area and want to come and, and school me and come on the program, maybe that would be awesome because I'm always up for learning and I love that stuff. Um, but suffice it to say, no, this is not 63 point whatever. It's it's a little bit less, but you know what? It's getting a fantastic signal to uh, the building just across the way, and uh, I couldn't be happier. Now, as I talk about hams, though, I should mention that there's this thing called the HSMM mesh, and I've talked about this a bit in the past when I talk about uh, free and open networks and, and uh, censorship and you know um, future internets and things of that nature, um, but ham radio operators licensed amateur radio operators here in the u.s are granted by the fcc some really cool abilities that just typical consumers don't necessarily have and there's a really fun intersection between the um the frequencies that they're given access to by the fcc and the consumer stuff that we use the ism band that 2.4 gigahertz spectrum which is uh you know starts at like 2.40 to 2.48 something and somewhere in the middle there um, and we separate it by channels and whatnot. And there are, at least for here, us in the United States, we get access to 11 of those channels. So channel one would be lower in the spectrum and channel 11 would be higher. Well, channels one through six overlap an area that the FCC gives to amateur radio operators. Um, and so they can actually use modified Wi-Fi gear at much higher, like we're talking 1500 watt units here if you're actually licensed. And the way that it works is, if you're a ham radio operator, you can set up your equipment in this spectrum, so channels one through six of the Wi-Fi uh, spectrum and in 2.4 gigahertz. And then your other friend who's also a licensed ham radio operator can then pick that up and do fun stuff with it. And that's actually really cool because you can you know, go for miles and miles with this stuff. And it's actually fantastic for backhauls and making really cool big links and that's not what we're doing here. Um, you know, more power to every uh, operator. Uh, however, I don't feel that I should have to register with the government to, um, to be able to use what I consider something that's a natural resource, as much so as uh, the sun that is beaming at me right now, which is energy and, and uh, the soil and, and the wind and water and everything else. I'm not gonna go on a tangent there, but uh, one of the, the key factors that really dissuades me from uh, the ham radio stuff uh, or getting my amateur license and being able to have the privilege to use those higher wattages and things of that nature is that 
they actually limit or censor what it is that you can say. And I'm not just talking about dropping the F-bomb on a CB radio, I, I'm, that's, that's not a concern. However, it's really nice that in this free and open ISM band with this Wi-Fi equipment that we can use cool protocols like WPA and TKIP and encryption algorithms. Well, sure you can build a 1500 watt Wi-Fi radio if you're a ham operator, but it can't use encryption, and that's kind of a huge bummer. That's right, the government says, nope, it's got to be open and in the clear. And yeah, no thanks. However, still really interesting point to mention there, um, and still encouraging any hams in the San Francisco Bay Area that want to get together and, uh, and do some fun, crazy stuff. I am absolutely down. Um, so yeah, that was just a, a quick little bit on, on DBMs and, and those things. Uh, two things that I wanted to note here about this setup, uh, particular to our first node, is that uh, I'm actually using a PoE with the Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark V. And it's not a typical active PoE, it's actually a really passive simple PoE, where basically I have an injector downstairs that puts 12 volts into the extra cables that are used in a Cat5e cable typically, you know, uh, four twisted pairs or eight wires and not all of them are used. So we're using two of them for power in this situation, which is great because the only wire that I have actually coming up here to the roof is this, you know, 100 foot ethernet that's going down to our network in the, uh, in the office. Um, otherwise, it's powered right off of that. My initial concept for this, and I actually have proven this, although I was getting some really cloudy days the last week when we were trying to shoot this, was to go solar with this. And a nice 15 watt panel does the trick. And we're going to be using that in a, in a later node in the mesh, but uh, I wanted to point that out here that I'm actually using PoE and I couldn't be happier because it's really nice to only have to run one cable. So power e over ethernet for the win. Uh, the other thing to note here about this, and this applies to, of course, all of the subsequent nodes here, is that I'm actually using a horizontal polarization. So what I mean with polarization is that, you know, Wi-Fi, it's radios, it's, it's antennas and, you know, it's transmitters and receivers, and all antennas have a polarization. This would be a vertical polarization, while this would be a horizontal polarization. And so with Wi-Fi, typically what we use is a vertical polarization. The reason for this is because laptops, you know, typically you open them up, the screen's facing vertical, and that's fantastic because, you know, if your access point has its antenna pointed up, it's radiating its energy like this, and it's, and the antenna on the, um, on the uh, laptop that's built into the monitor or the LCD screen on the back is doing the same thing. So that's how you get you know, decent reception with your laptop with an access point and why you may notice, in fact, if you actually take, say, your phone or your tablet and you're holding it like this and you've got good signal and then you hold it like this and you don't have good signal. Now there's a bunch of really cool tricks with MIMO and different uh, technologies. We're specifically talking to very dumb, simple 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi here, but, um, but suffice it to say, with, with one antenna in here going up and down right here, this would be a vertical orientation for my phone, and that would be horizontal. And the reason that I bring that up is because we're going to have to make sure that we use the same uh, polarization on the other end, on our next node in this, because if it's, you know, I'm gonna use Hack5 stickers as an example, because, you know, it's, it's kind of like a sheet of paper, really, where, you know, if my signal is going this way and my antenna on the other side is that way, there's not a whole lot of intersection there. That's just a tiny point. But if they're both facing the same way, they're actually speaking much better. Um, and so you can actually try this with, uh, you know, the antenna in your laptop. Hold your laptop sideways. Here, actually, just go ahead. Hey there. <laughs> and uh, let me know how that worked out. Uh, run, run Kismet or, or uh, some other programs to see your signal drop. Um, and it's, it's just an important note here. Uh, and also that, you know, as you can see, with, with, when we look at the DBM table, right, I use a table because it's easy for me to understand. You can see that it's kind of exponential in the way that the growth is with those antennas. I mean, this right here is a, you know, 6 dBi antenna. And then we've got a 9 dBi dipole, you know, and I'm not talking about, you know, wavelengths or anything like that yet. But as you can see, things get exponentially bigger from, you know, 6 to 7 to nine, of course, this is being a panel and this is being a dipole. So this one is more of a, you know, shotgun with a uh, smaller beam width than with this one trying to radiate all the way around. And then, you know, we've got like slightly bigger with our 14, you know, so this would be a seven DBI panel and this is a 14 DBI panel. And then this would be a, what is this? A 19 DBI.
DPI panel. But they can get larger and larger and we can get pretty crazy with those. But again, this is a really fun project where I want to hear your feedback, especially if you're in the Bay Area and want to have some radio fun. Uh, so hit me up in the comments, uh, shoot me an email, Darren at hack5.org. Let us know feedback at hack5.org what you think. And uh, next week we're going to get into our next node and some fun uh, Wi-Fi drops. We'll explain that later. Cheers. You guys know it doesn't matter if you're a happy hacker or a delivery drone ready to join the robot offensive. When that killer idea hits, you need to snag a domain name and web hosting fast. And Domain.com's quick domain discovery system and easy checkout process, you can have your website up in no time at all. I love Domain.com because they are so affordable, reliable, they're easy to use, plus Domain.com's totally active on social media. It makes it really great customer service, a great place to do business. And the guys are over at Domain.com, huge fans of Hack5, so they want to hook you up. So if you use the coupon code HAK5 at checkout, you get an extra 15% off. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. We're back and now it's time for the trivia question of the week. So last week's trivia question was, what is the name of the MIT graduate and NASA scientist who in 1991 designed a virtual reality system to drive Mars rovers from Earth in apparent real time despite substantial delays of Mars, Earth, Mars signals? And the answer was Antonio Medina. Now this week's trivia question is, Unijunction transistors, aka UJTs, are often used in simple oscillator circuits. What is the characteristic of a transistor defined as unijunction? You can answer that at hack5.org trivia for your chance to win some awesome Hack 5 swag.